We've got our Ireland back, lads. Is that uh, the angle that we're going at from the, the last couple of games from the Republic of Ireland? Eileen Gleeson has stood in and said to the nation, listen, the, the dour attack, lack of attacking football that we've had over the past few months, she's not going to stand for it. And in League B, uh, poor old nations like Hungary and Northern Ireland have been put to the sword as the likes of Katie McCabe and Denise O'Sullivan show what they've got. I tell you, it's like they're back? panicking in Albania now, aren't they? About what's going to come next month. An almighty beating is going to come their way. Uh, yeah, this is exciting, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. you know there was this time last week we were discussing Diane Caldwell's press conference and the level of expectation and that the players now had to back this up, and they've put their money where their mouth is. Like they have played really good, solid, quality attacking football. Uh, I think Gleeson has you know made some tactical changes, but the obvious one is that she's put Denise O'Sullivan and Katie McCabe in a position where they're always, always getting on the ball. And, you know, I think a lot of the criticism of Vera Powell's tactics uh, is quite harsh in that, you know, she set up a certain way that she felt would achieve success for Ireland. But the major question mark constantly was, well, why is Katie McCabe stuck out on the left-hand side? Cannot get her into games. Actually, just play her in a more central position. Just play her in a place where she can be Ireland's best player. And, you know, she looked head and shoulders, I think, above even everybody else at the pitch last night. Every time she touched the ball, she just oozed quality and... Yeah, it, I think it's it's obviously important in terms of uh, qualification and look, we can get into Nations League impacts and all that sort of stuff. But I think just in terms of the sense of moving on from what happened over the last few weeks, like the, the last four days couldn't really couldn't have gone any better. Yeah, who'd have known that Ireland could play such attractive football? Because the narrative was not there in the summer. There was one moment in about halfway through the first half, there was a series of about half a dozen one-twos between... Katie McCabe and Denise O'Sullivan, which is just fabulous, like and like clearly the two best players on the pitch, but actually showcasing that. I don't think McCabe's ever really had a problem with that, but there was a Denise O'Sullivan issue in the summer, definitely. And uh, it's rectified, like Nathan already said, with playing just both players playing in more suited positions. Again, like the Northern Ireland game on Saturday, they started slow. It was quite sloppy, opening 10 minutes. Heather Payne kind of accidentally hit the crossbar with, with crossing the ball in. Uh, but Hungary were... Again, like just like Northern Ireland, no great shakes at all, but Ireland still had to play a bit of football. And you could see that when McCabe, like a clever disguised free kick from about 50 yards out to play in Lucy Quinn, who had a kind of skewed shot wide. Um, there was a true ball for Kira Crusa right before Ireland's opening goal, which the defender did well to track back on. She actually probably should have gone near post uh, Caruso, one of the, the few things she did wrong all night, I'd say, by her standards. And then the, the, like the, the goals, every single one of the goals is quality for different reasons. Uh, we were talking pre-show about the first goal and the, the build-up play to that. It was just brilliant. That cross, I mean, how deep is McCabe hitting that cross with such pace and danger on it that by the time it actually reaches the head of uh, Caitlin Hayes, it's still dangerous, if you know what I mean, because there's such a distance there. It reminds me very randomly on of Eric Cantona's assist for Steve Bruce for Manchester United against Liverpool, January 4th, 1994, in a famous three-all game. Exact same type of cross from way out with a centre back heading it in at the far post. Hayes made it look better though because of the diving header as well. First first goal and only your second cap. Where has Caitlin Hayes been? There's obviously a massive health warning here when we're discussing these games that Hungary are way off the level of the Republic of Ireland. Northern Ireland, uh, we thought might be a bit closer to the level and Albania are going to be way off it as well. And we have seen... Ireland play Georgia over the last 18 months. They beat them 11-0. They beat them 9-0. That the gaps between different countries are still enormous. We saw that during qualification for the European Championship where Ireland were the only sec team that weren't seeded second to get in. It basically went with the rankings the whole way through. So these are games Ireland should be winning. Uh, it does, in a way, make me think of uh, the most unfortunate thing that has happened to Ireland in the men's game in a long, long time, which was that we didn't get relegated from the Nations League when we were meant to get relegated. So you might remember... Uh, the Martin O'Neill era, where we finished bottom of our group in that classic campaign uh, involving who else but uh, Denmark, Denmark and Wales. Wales. Uh, and we should have been relegated. The rules were we were going to be relegated. They decided to change the rules. We stay in League B. We're actually, if Ireland had been dropped back to League C, Stephen Kenny's coming in. You're playing a lesser quality of opposition. You get yourself a few wins and maybe you kick on from there. But uh, it wasn't to be. But this is, uh, you know, I, I think you were going through the permutations last night. There is always. It's the great thing about the Nations League. There's always a knock-on effect to the results, to winning. And Eileen Gleeson's obviously talking about trying to win all six games now because the more points you get, the higher up the rankings you go, you earn your promotion, all of those things. And, yeah, it's like it's opened up a lot of questions, I think, uh, about what's gone on 
in the previous era around the style of football, uh, albeit, again, as I say, a massive health warning about the quality of the opposition because we saw McCabe and we saw Sullivan play in that more central role. And we've seen Tyler Tolden come back. Yeah. Like, and that's that's going to be a developing story, I suspect, over the next few weeks as Tyler Tolland maybe sits down, does more in-depth interviews. You know, I definitely was one of those who thought, well, you know, what is Tyler Tolan doing at club level? Like, what is, you know, Vera Powell has made her decision. Okay, maybe she should be in or around the squad. There's obviously a personal issue there. Uh, but the fact that she has come in here and looked so comfortable in these first two games, I think, again, raises a lot of questions uh, for Vera Powell, for the FAI, as to what has happened here, that she was ostracized, essentially, for so long. Mm. It's amazing that, because uh, my expectation last week having only kind of followed the toll and story through, you know, the the interviews from her family and the quotes coming from her family was that, you know, this would be a, a slow burn in terms of her uh, international career that she'd come off the bench, make a couple of appearances here and there. Mm. But she's not only coming to the squad, she's coming to the starting team and had a huge impact immediately, which which is a, a very, very striking thing. But to your point on the Nations League, Nathan, like, I think Jeremy made this point earlier in the week that you kind of want a bit of a lucky general as well. And I, and I think in a way the start that Eileen Gleeson has got couldn't have been better in terms of the fixtures. Like, if they were ranked one place higher, they would have been in League A. Would we be having the same conversation had they been playing two top-tier nations after the first two games? Would you be able to put your own stamp on the team as easily? Would you be able to attack uh, as freely as they did? Obviously not. So I think the fact that they've been in League B is brilliant, and they will be in League A, barring a, a, a dramatic downturn in form in the next uh, campaign, which is, of course, a European campaign because the Nations League just repeats again next year. So it's lined up really, really nicely for her, even in, in, in terms of small little stories, the fact that a lot of the Hungarian players caught a virus over the course of the weekend. Uh, just bits and pieces like that that uh, we've definitely been unused to seeing when it comes to the men's side of things. And uh, yeah, the good luck may keep on coming. And Eileen Gleeson starting to sound like she may not be overly disinterested in taking the job. Yeah, well, she was uh, a, bit, a bit more coy after the match last night when she was asked about her medium to long-term future a bit more as the Republic of Ireland yeah. uh, senior manager because she has a job to do already of, as, as head of uh, women's and girls football in Ireland. But she said herself, look, the heart be racing after results and performances like that. So I'm not going to answer it right now because if she was to give an answer last night, I'm sure it would be a lot different to what she was saying at the weekend because it has gone so well. Mm. Uh, it's funny, we're talking about this and, and playing like inferior opposition and then we played at the World Cup and we had the kind of similar team conversation with Jonathan Wilson on Monday morning, which is there is something to be said for the enjoyment aspect of playing against sides that you are better than. So you can see just how good your how players are we can be. To play? The, the, this yeah, is our plan. When because there was, look, there was still pressure. Like we already alluded to it this time last week. The, the narrative was completely different. We're talking about a press conference again. And even on Friday, even on Saturday morning, we were like, this is the start of a new era. But they still had to be beaten those sides, and they still had, and the Irish players still had to perform at a level that backs up their perceived notion of overconfidence by a lot of the public. You know, I mean, that there was a perception out there, and it was unfair, by the way. But they went out, and in those last two games, albeit against sides that they should be beating every day of the week, it wasn't just the goals; it was performances with room to improve. So, at, as we talk about it this morning. It's looking very good, but they still have to do the job, regardless of the opposition. And they still have to do a couple of more jobs as well. I, I suspect going up to Belfast is actually going to be the toughest fixture. Like the, on paper last night, Hungary being the highest ranked team away from home should on paper be the toughest fixture, but but maybe Northern Ireland will be, be trickier again on the evidence of what we've seen this week. And something on Tyler Tolan too, I noticed Katie McCabe is, has very high standards for her. I noticed it on Saturday in the stadium, and I saw it on TV a bit last night, if Tolan does make an error just overhit a pass or, or just simply doesn't find a teammate McCabe's on to her right you know it's kind of taken her under a wing because she knows how good this player can be but it's an interesting if, if, dynamic guess, like I guess you know Katie McCabe has, has made a point that you know Tyler Tolan can take tough love you know maybe maybe it would have been possible to exist in the, the previous regime beforehand I'm not saying that's what the point the point she's trying to make but uh, it definitely is a, a happy little coincidence